What verse you at? Uh, at 12. Go ahead and read it. That at, times, that at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel uh -huh. and strangers for the covenant the covenants of promise. Uh -huh. Having no hope and without God in the world. Having no hope and without God in the world. Go ahead. But now in Christ Jesus. But now. But now. See, that's where they get the but now from. You know, the grace dispensation. But now, uh-huh. In Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are, uh -huh. made, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now, why don't our Israelite brothers read this? You see, he's talking to the Gentiles right here. He said, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The Gentile, I mean the Israelite want to put the Gentile away and the Gentile want to put the Israelite away. <laughs> when I'm here to tell you, you ain't putting nobody away. Because whatsoever, whatsoever nation that worketh righteous is accepted with God. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Verse 14. For he is our peace, uh -huh. who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Now, he had broken down, that's, that's simple English right there. He broke down, we have been made one and have broken down a middle wall partition between us. That is plain English right there. Let's go back now. Let's go back to verse 4. Let's go back to verse 4 because we got to get uh, 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 in times past. So we got the, uh, 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 we got, uh, I'm sorry, time passed, then we got but now, now we got to get the ages to come. <laughs> so back up to verse 4. Go ahead and read it. But God, uh -huh. who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, uh -huh. even when we were dead in sin. Have quickened us together with Christ. Uh -huh. By grace ye are saved. Keep reading. And have raised us up together. Stop right there. He did what? Raised us up together. You see Paul's teachings right here? It wasn't no separation. He had raised us up together. This is Paul's teaching. Now Israelites and Gentiles always bragging on what Paul said. This and Paul said this. Why aren't y'all reading this? Have raised us up together. Talk about the Gentile and the Israelite. Go ahead. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. That in ages to come. Stop right there. That in ages to come. Because you know we got the time past. But now. Which is the grace dispensation. And ages to come. You know God. He set his word up in timelines. For each generation. Read verse 7 again. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now, so now we got all three dispensations, as they call it. But one thing they forgot, though. One thing that the Israelites forgot, and one thing that the Gentile forgot. Skip down to verse 19. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, uh -huh. but fellow citizens with the saints uh -huh. and of the household of God. Now, wait a minute. Now, who is Paul talking to? He's talking to the Ephesians right here, to the Gentiles. Yes, sir. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Who are the saints? Israelites. Israelites. They didn't, we didn't join them. They joined us. Now, so who are we to say, because Paul was smart, he was wiser than all of us in this generation. So now how you going to go against what he's saying now? He was wiser than all of us. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Stop right there. <laughs> You see what he said? He said, look, and are built upon the foundation of who? The apostles and the prophets. So much for being a New Testament Christian. 
Because he said this foundation is built upon the apostles and the prophets. Go ahead and read. Jesus Christ himself being of the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The church is built, the foundation of the church is built upon the apostles and the prophets. And Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So no more that Israel putting away the Gentile and the Gentile putting away Israel. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, 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 Psalms the thirty third chapter, Psalms thirty three, Psalms thirty three, and I like to say, you know, they it, there's there's a big division when it comes to Israel and the Gentile and all the other nations too. I'm just pointing out the Gentile because they're the ones that Paul was dealing with at this time. But well, we can say the same thing about the Hamites and the rest of Shem's children too. We have Psalms 33. Psalms 33. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Psalms 33 and 10. Go ahead and read it. The Lord bringing the counsel of the heathen to naught. He's going to bring the counsel of the heathen to what? To naught. To nothing. And we're going to see, Paul will tell you the same thing. He's going to tell you the same thing. He said he's going to bring the counsel of the heathen. Who are the heathen? That is the nations. He said he's going to bring their counsel of the heathen to naught. Go ahead. He maketh the devices of people of none effect. Uh-huh. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. It standeth for how long? Forever. Forever to who? Go ahead. Thoughts of his heart to all generations. Oh, to all generations? Not though he set up a timeline, you know, uh, time passed, but now, and the ages to come. The Lord has set his word up like that. He said the counsel of the Lord standing forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. To all generations. And we are a generation, right? Well, his thoughts and his counsel is to us too then. Make it plain. And we know that the foundation is built upon who? The apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Go ahead and read. Twelve. Uh-huh. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Uh-huh. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. And he said, blessed is the nation who God have, whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. He chose to give the Gentiles and everybody else who wanted his word too. Not just Israel. He just chose Israel to give it to everybody else. Or to dispense it to everybody else. That's what Israel's job was. Blessed. You see that? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen uh, for his own inheritance. Verse 13, go ahead. The Lord looking from heaven, uh -huh. he beholdeth all the sons of men. He beholding the Israelites. All the sons all of men. All the sons of men. All the sons of men. He's checking everybody out. He's seeing who's being naughty and nice. You know, they try to pattern a set, uh, Santa Claus after Jesus or, the, or God. He's looking out. He's checking out all nations, all the sons of men, and he's seeing who's being naughty and nice, who's falling on my word and who's not. Because you got some Israelites that's not following his word too, just as well as the Gentiles, just as well as the Hamites, just as well as the Shemites. Make it plain. And it's going to be Israelites in the fire too. Teach. Go ahead and read. 14. Uh-huh. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Now we're going to reveal this mystery to you. We're going to reveal this mystery to you. Let's go to Ephesians, the third chapter. Ephesians 3. And we're going to reveal this mystery to you. Ephesians the third chapter, Ephesians 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1, Ephesians 3 and 1. Let's see what this mystery is. <coughs> Ephesians 3 and 1, everybody got it? Yeah. 
Go ahead and read. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, uh -huh. if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Now, wait a minute, because you know Paul was sent to the uncircumcision, which are the Gentiles. And Peter was sent to the Jews, or the circumcision. He said, for this cause I, Paul, excuse me, prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. You see, Paul, why don't our Israelite brothers read this? Paul was in, he was the uh, uh, minister to the Gentiles. Those are Caucasian people. Go ahead and read verse 2 again. If ye have heard of this dispensation of the grace of God, which see, is given to me. See, this is the dispensation of God, not of Paul. Teach. Paul didn't have his own era. You know, they want to read all Paul's books and that's it. You know, for the grace dispensation. Skip Peter, what Peter said, John, James, you understand, whoever else. Skip them, just Paul. But you got to have two or more witnesses for the matter to be established. And so far, we have saw two, just, not just Paul, but we got two or more witnesses. Go ahead and read that verse again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given, given me to you. Uh-huh. See, I'm sorry, because dispensation also means stewardship. So Paul was given the stewardship over the Gentiles. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. Uh-huh. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. Uh-huh. As I wrote afar in few words. He said he made, revealed the mystery unto me. So Paul understood what this mystery was. Because God, because the Lord revealed it to him. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Uh-huh. Which is other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Uh huh. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Go ahead. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Stop right there. That the, this is the mystery right here. That the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs. They're going to be fellow heirs. Restart that again. Yes, sir. Five. Uh huh. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, uh -huh. as, it, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostle and prophets by the Spirit. Go ahead. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs uh -huh. of the same body. Of the same what? Body. Well, what is the body? That's the church. Yes, sir. Christ's body is symbolized as the church. Now wait a minute. Now. He said that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, the same church. So we all are supposed to be in one church. Come on. Go ahead and read. And partakers of his promise in Christ by uh -huh. the gospel. Go ahead. Whereof I was made a minister. According to the gift of the grace of God given it to me uh -huh. by the effectual workings of his power. Oh, so now he said, look, man, we all supposed to be one body. He talking to the Gentile. You all are supposed to be fellow heirs with the Jews. You're supposed to be fellow heirs with the Jews. One body. Let's go look at this again. Let's go to Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians 1. And this time we're going to pick it up at verse 21, Colossians 1 and 21. This is, that's the big mystery. <clears throat> is that the Gentiles are supposed to become fellow heirs with the saints. Colossians 1, Colossians 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 21. Go ahead and read it. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Uh-huh. Yet now have he reconciled. Now have he reconciled. He reconciled you to God. The Gentiles. And anybody and anybody of another nation that wants to be a servant of God. He has reconciled you. But you have to come under his blood to be reconciled. Oh, Go ahead and read. 22. Uh -huh. In the body of his flesh. I say what? Uh, uh, um, read verse 20. Start at verse 20. Verse 20. Here we go. 
And having made peace through the blood of his cross. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. Uh huh. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. Uh huh. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or uh -huh. things in heaven. So he had reconciled all things unto himself by what? His blood. blood. Yes, sir. Verse 21, go ahead. And you. There were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Uh-huh. You're talking to the Gentiles, to the Colossians now. Go ahead, same thing he said to the Ephesians. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Yet now have he reconciled. Uh-huh. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable. Wait a minute. Hold on. You mean the Gentiles can also be holy and unblameable just like the Israelites? It's written, brother. It's written. Say, in the, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable. Go ahead. Yes, sir. <clears throat> to present you holy and unblameable and unprovable uh -huh. in his sight. Go ahead. If you continue in the faith. Stop Go right ahead. there. If you continue in the faith. See, you just you can't come up with your own doctrine. You got to continue in the faith that you were given. If you continue in the faith, uh-huh. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled, uh-huh. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. See, you got to you got to a partake of the gospel in order to be a servant of God. In order to be reconciled by the blood of Jesus. Now, once you reconcile, you got to be content. You got to continue in the uh, faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away. Because that's what people have done. They have moved people away. Even the Gentiles have moved people away from the faith by giving them this eschatology, preterism, Calvinism, dispensationalism. Baptist, Methodist. Yes, sir. All these other so-called uh, uh, denominations where you only see one church in the book. And that is Israel. And look, the Gentile was joined to Israel. Israel wasn't joined to the Gentile. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Go ahead and read. Which ye have heard. Which ye have heard. Who they hear from? The Israelites, the Jews. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature. Uh-huh. Which is under heaven. Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Keep reading. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. And fill up that which is behind the affliction of Christ uh -huh. in my flesh see, for his body's sake. See, Paul was being afflicted too. You know, he was persecuting the church. Then he turned around and got the Lord persecuted him. Sure enough. I mean, you know, he, he physically he was persecuting Paul and afflicted him physically. Yes, you know, so many times that men wanted to kill Paul, Israelites and Gentiles was going to kill Paul. One time they were getting ready to kill Paul. They, the Israelites had the Gentiles getting ready to kill him. They had to let Paul down in the basket at night. Get on out of here, Paul, because they're going to kill you. And then one time, the Paul, in Acts the 21st chapter, they were crying. The Israelites were crying because Paul was getting ready to go to Jerusalem. And the, one, of the, one of the guys said, look, the man that owned this girl, this is how he's going to be twisted up when he go to Jerusalem. So the people start crying, like, Paul, don't go. They're going to uh, uh, bound you up in Jerusalem. And Paul said, look, he said, what meaneth you by this? He said, don't you know that I will go to Jerusalem and die for the word of the Lord? Amen. Amen. And they left off and said, okay, brother, <laughs> go ahead and <then."> hit. <laughs> because Paul, he was, he was one of the strongest apostles when it comes to the word of God. What verse you at? I'm in the middle of 24. Go ahead. 
at the top. Uh -huh. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for uh -huh. his body's sake. Uh -huh. Which is the church. Oh, that's who the church is, the body? Indeed. It is the church. The body is the church. Now I'm going to show you something here. But keep reading. Whereof? Uh -huh. I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for uh -huh. you uh -huh. to fulfill the word of God. To fulfill the word of God. Uh -huh. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and uh -huh. from generations. Go ahead. But now is made manifest to his saints. And what is the mystery of God that was hidden that the Gentiles should become fellow heirs with the saints? Not that they were going to become the saints as far as they were the saints and then the Israelites, forget them, or the Jews, forget them. The Gentiles are the saints now. Uh-uh. They're going to become fellow heirs with the saints, with the Jews. Go ahead and read. 27. Uh-huh. To whom God who would make, excuse me, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery uh -huh. among the Gentiles? What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? Because if you understand this, brother, and you doing it, you are rich. Hallelujah. You are rich. Go ahead and read. Which is Christ in you. Uh-huh. The hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man uh -huh. and teaching every man in all wisdom. Go ahead. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Every man. See, so uh, Paul is teaching these Gentiles right here and telling them, look, you all can become perfect too. Yes, but you have to continue in the faith that was preached unto you. Go ahead and finish that. 29. Uh-huh. Whereunto I also labor striving according to the working. Uh-huh. Which worketh in me mightily. Now, let's go now. That's don't, that, that don't, you know, when you start listening to those Israelites, they're saying that the Lord is going to destroy everybody else and not the Israelites. That don't sound like the teachings of Paul. It's not written. That's not written in this book. Now, when it comes to the Gentiles, let's read a little bit something more about them. We're going to read this little uh, pamphlet right here. We got this because it's, it's common among people that know about it. So we got this off of uh, Theopedia. Because you can go and see it on Wikipedia. You can go and look it up in the encyclopedia. I just got this because it's quicker. Everybody understand? <laughs> So now we're looking at this dispensationalism. What does it say right there? Dispensationalism is a theological system. See, the theology. You know what theology is? It's a theory. Yes, sir. It's not the word of God. The word of God is sure. It is the truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, now so these dispensationalists, they deal with theory. It's a theological system. Uh-huh. Theological system that teaches biblical history is best understood in light of a number of successive administrations of God's dealing with mankind. What we just read earlier. You know, God put his word in the timeline and he dealt with the past. He dealt with them. Then, uh, 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 but now, which is a great dispensation, that's who he's dealing with now. That's from... Uh, from Romans to Philemon, and then the ages to come, that's another dispensation, which is from Hebrews to Revelations. And don't forget the past, that's from Genesis to Acts. <laughs> when they don't understand, what they don't understand is that, look, Acts, that's the beginning of the New Testament, really. Because the Testament don't go in forth until after the testators are dead. Yeah, that's right. So when Acts, when the Lord, when the Lord died and ascended off to heaven, that's when uh, uh, the New Testament started. So they got that wrong right there. It should be from uh, from from Genesis to John, if you want to say that. I mean, you know, you want to try to put it in order. 
But they got it from Genesis to Acts. But anyway, go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At the top. Uh huh. Dispensationalism is a theological system that teaches biblical history and is best understood in light of a number of successive ministrations of God's dealing with mankind. Uh huh. Which it, which it calls dispensations. It maintains fundamental distinctions between God's plan for, nas for national Israel uh -huh. and for the New Testament church. Stop right there. So it's a fundamental difference between national Israel and for the New Testament church. Ain't no such church. <laughs> Come on, brother. Ain't no such church. Go ahead and read. It emphasizes prophecy of the end times. And a pre-tribulation rapture of uh -huh. the church prior to Christ's second coming. No, we're not going to even deal with no rapture stuff. <laughs> you go look at our lesson on the rapture. Well, we deal with that in, uh, in full. But go ahead and read in detail. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, its beginning are usually associated with the Plymouth Brethren movement uh -huh. in the U.K., and the teachings of John Nelson Darby. Now we ain't gonna even deal with him, cause we don't even care really who started it, cause we know it's fake, it's fake anyway. Make that plain, brother. We know that's not the word of God. Turn that page. Mm. Now we are gonna start right. Mm. We got it marked off. One. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. It says beliefs. About the church and Israel. Uh huh. Um, you can go right there. Yeah, read it. It, yeah. In addition to these dispensations, the real theological significance can be seen in four basic tenets. Uh huh. Which is underlying, which which underlie classic dispensational teaching. Dispensationalism maintains. No. Why? Uh -huh. It says a fundamental distinction between the law and grace. A fundamental difference, a distinction between the law and grace. If you're not keeping the law, then you sure are not, are not under grace. Make that plan. <laughs> if you're not keeping God's law, you are not under grace. Go ahead and read. It says an example. They are mutually exclusive ideals. Then it says two. A fundamental distinction between Israel and the church. An example, there are two peoples of God with two different distinct uh -huh. destinies. Uh -huh. With two different de destinies. Earthly Israel and the spiritual church. Now, you you see, uh, you know what they say? They say, look, when the Lord returns, Israel is going to be on the earth, but the church is going to be in heaven. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, man, people come up with all type of theology and doctrine. So that's what they say in the spiritual church, meaning that the church is going to heaven, but Israel is going to be on the earth. Because God got two plans working for men. He got one plan for Israel, and he got another plan for the church, the Gentiles. No, sir. But we see that it's only one body. And Christ's body, Christ's body is symbolized as a church. One church. And if you ain't a part of that church, then you are not part of church. So, You're not a part of the church? That's it, brother. What does three say? Three. The view that the New Testament church is a parenthesis uh -huh. in God's plan, which was not foreseen by the Old Testament. Uh huh. Go ahead down there. By the Old Testament and the distinction between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Uh huh. The rapture of the church at Christ's coming. Stop right there. See, the rapture of the church. Rapture where? To heaven. Israel will be on the earth, but then the church, the Gentile, they will be in heaven. <laughs> I tell you, boy, so now, so now they're trying to separate, because, you know, if, if, if Gentile in heaven, God got to be up in heaven with them, right? So they're trying to separate uh, uh, Israel from God. <laughs> Just like Israel now trying to separate the Gentile from God. Go ahead and read, but it is one church. Go ahead. Yes, sir. It says, uh, back at the top, it says, uh -huh. distinction between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. An example, the rapture of the church at Christ's coming in the air. Uh-huh. Then it says, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, precedes uh -huh. the official second coming 
to the earth uh -huh. by the seven years of tribulation. Now we are, we're not going to even deal with all that rapture and tribulation. We know it's three and a half years of tribulation, not no seven. Okay. But we got a lesson that we deal with on the tribulations. But you see how they try to make a distinction between uh, Israel and the church, the Gentile? But we don't, that's not the teachings of Paul. And that's mainly what they deal with in this age. And doing since 70 AD, since the first century, that's what the Gentile has been under the grace dispensation. And that's all they deal with is Paul's writing from, uh, what was that, from uh, uh, Romans to Philemon. The grace dispensation. Let's go to Colossians. We're going to knock that right in the head. Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15. Go ahead and read it. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Uh-huh. To which also ye are called in, the bo in one body. Uh-huh. And be ye thankful. You call in what? One body. One body. What is the body? Church. The church. Israel. So there's no distinct difference between Israel and the Gentile or the church because it's only one church. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. One body. One church. Let's go now. Let's go to Jeremiah. So now we, we're going to look at some more of the teachings of Paul. Let's go. First we're going to Jeremiah the 17th chapter though. And then too, you know, this is Paul's writing right here, whom everybody uh, put all their stock in. Paul's writing. But Paul, we see Paul is teaching unity, not separatism, not uh, eschatology and preterism and Calvinism and dispensationalism. All these are man-made doctrines are, that are not going to get you into the kingdom. They, they won't even get you across the street, let alone in the kingdom. We had uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Jeremiah 17 and 9. When you get it, go ahead and read it. The heart is deceitful above all things. See, that's what happens to people when they don't adhere to what they read. Their heart deceive them. Their minds deceive them. The heart is deceivable above, above all things. Uh huh. And desperately wicked. Uh huh. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his way. Uh huh. And according to the fruit of his doing. Now that's what the prophet said. That's time pass. Now we got to get to the but now. The grace dispensation from Romans to Philemon. Because that's what's been dispensation we under right now. <laughs> Let's go to Romans 8 chapter and see what Paul says. Romans 8. And we're going to pick it up in verse 27. Let's see if Paul taught anything different. Romans 8 and 27. <clears throat> when you get it, go ahead and read. And he that searches the hearts know of what is the mind of the Spirit. Wait a minute. And Paul said the same thing that we just read in Jeremiah. So now where is the distinct difference at? Go ahead and read that again. And he that searches the hearts know of what is the mind of the Spirit. Uh-huh. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Go ahead. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Uh-huh. To them who are the called according to his to purpose. To them that are called according to his person. According to his purpose. But look, God searching the heart and mind. And Paul telling these Gentiles the same thing that Jeremiah said. So we got so-called past dispensation. And then we got the but now dispensation. But looks like they both saying the same thing. Teach, teach. Well, let's go now. Let's go because we got to get to the uh, uh, ages to come. We got to get to that dispensation and see what that says. And we also going to find out who is this talking about that searched the heart and the reins to give every man according to his works. 
So Paul tells the Gentile the same thing. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation, the second chapter. Revelation 2. Because Revelation is from Hebrews for Revelation. That is the ages to come. That's not for us. We have Revelation 2 and 20. Revelation 2 and 20. Revelation 2 and 20. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Notwithstanding, uh -huh. I have a few things against thee. Go ahead. Because thou suffereth the woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Now wait a minute. Fornication? What, what, why, is this in, why is this in the Bible? Or well, how is this in Revelation, I should say? If, if the law is done away with, well, why are we talking about fornication? Make that plain, brother. Make it plain. Read that one more time, because somebody didn't get that. Not with no, Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Uh-huh. Because thou suffereth the woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, uh -huh. to teach and seduce, and to seduce, my servants to commit fornication. Uh-huh. And to eat things sacrificing to idols. And to eat things sacrificing to idols. Go ahead. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. Uh-huh. And she repented not. Go ahead. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her. Stop right there. What, what is that doing right there? Adultery. Make it plain. Didn't that come out the Old Testament? Come on. Isn't that the law? Yes, sir. Thou shalt not commit adultery? Indeed. Behold, I will cast her in the bed, and them that commit adultery with her, uh-huh. Into a great tribulation. Uh-huh. Except they repent of their deed. Go ahead. And I will kill her children with death. Now, who is this talking right here now? This is the Lord talking, right? Amen. And I will kill her with death, uh-huh. And all the churches shall know. That I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. Stop right there. He said that all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the heart. So who is that talking about over in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter? That search the heart and reign and to give every man according to his works. He was the Lord. He was Jehovah then. Then he came as Jesus. Now he's telling you, he is the one that's searching the rain and the hearts. Go ahead and read. And I will give it to every one of you according to your works. And I'm going to give, but you got to do some works? Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus did all the works. No, sir. Because that's one of the sayings in the church, you know. Well, you don't have to do no works. Jesus done all the works. Okay, you keep thinking that. And so we know that you're going to be lacking your works. You run around saying it. We know your works are lacking. So he's going to give you according to your works. I am he which searches the reins and the heart. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. The same thing that the prophet said in the past. The same thing that Paul said. Or doing the grace dispensation and the same thing that Revelation of the Lord is saying in the ages to come. Same thing. So where's the distinct difference? I tell you what, there is no difference. There is no difference. What God said to the prophets and to the people under the old covenant, he said the same thing to the ones that were in the first century. With Peter and Paul and James and Jesus, he said the same thing to them. And when you start getting to John and Revelation and them, he said the same thing to them too. His word endures to all generations. Let's go now. Let's go. Um, let's go to uh, First Corinthians. Let's go because Paul is going to ask a question right here. First Corinthians one. 1 Corinthians 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 1 and 1. He's going to ask a question right here. 1 Corinthians 1 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ uh -huh. through the will of God, uh -huh. and so Theosinus, our brother. Go ahead. Now look, Paul was called now. He said, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Go ahead and read. And so Themis, our brother, 
unto the church of God which is at Corinth, uh -huh. to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. you're going too fast, brother. Okay, let's slow it down. <laughs> some people, some people, this going to mean this going to buy people like a bullet. Come on. Unto the church of God, which is where? At Corinth. Yes, sir. That's in, that's in the Greek uh, um, um, town, ain't it? With, uh, unto the church of uh, which uh, unto the church of God which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints. Mm -hmm. You see, he's talking to the Gentiles. Go ahead and read. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, so if they call upon if, if, if they call upon the name of Jesus, whatever nation you in, you are accepted with God. Whatever nation you from, you are accepted. Go ahead and read. Why don't you stop it? Verse 3, yeah, go ahead. So, it says, uh, still at 2. So uh -huh. Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Uh-huh. Grace be unto you and peace. From God our Father uh -huh. and from the Lord Jesus Christ. From God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Skip down to verse 12. Go ahead. 12. Now, look, I'm just showing you the teachings of Paul. You understand? The mystery in his teachings. Because the world, they call themselves Christians, got Paul's writings and his teachings backwards. Yes, sir. They're saying the opposite of what Paul taught. Get down to verse 12, go ahead. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, uh -huh. and I of Apollos, go ahead. and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Now he said, you know, some of y'all saying that y'all following me, some of y'all following Apollos, some of y'all following Cephas, and some of y'all following Christ. Verse 13. Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? Who do you think the apostles were following? Who do you think Apollos and Cephas and Paul was following? They were following Christ. He told them, look, man, Christ is not divided. Was Paul, go ahead and read. Is Christ divided? Uh-huh. Was Paul crucified for you? He said, did I die for you? You know, because you, people want to make Paul some big, some somebody big, other than what he was. He was a servant of God just like we are, just like the rest of the apostles were, and he surely wasn't over Jesus. Go ahead and read. Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? They say, you weren't baptized in my name? You were not baptized in my name. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead and read. For Christ sent me not to baptize, uh -oh. but to preach the gospel. Uh-oh. Christ sent Jesus? I mean, Christ sent Paul? Come on. Not the other way around, like people try to make it. Paul is numero uno. No, Christ is numero uno. Yes, sir. Read that verse again. For Christ sent me not to, to baptize, but uh -huh. to preach the gospel. Uh huh. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none of faith. You see, I'm not coming with wisdom of words. I'm not coming to you with my own words. Go ahead and read. 18. Uh huh. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Uh huh. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Uh huh. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Uh huh. Now we read something like that in Psalms, the 33rd chapter. The thoughts of the heathen, he's going to destroy the counsel of the heathen. So now Paul telling you the same thing. Read that scripture again. Yes, sir. That yes, verse sir. again. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Uh-huh. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And will bring to nothing the understanding. The Lord told you that he was going to destroy the wisdom of, or the counsel of the heathen. And now Paul tells you, say, so now we got the past dispensation and we got the present dispensation as they want to call it, but it looks like everything is lining up. To me, what Paul is saying, lining up with the prophets. What Peter says, lining up with the prophets and with what Paul said. 
You finish that verse 19? Sure enough. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And now he's just going to tell you straight out. 1 Corinthians 11, and just read that verse 1. He's going to tell you straight out now. Be, Boy, be ye followers of me. Uh-huh. Even as I also am of Christ. And, and even as I am also a follower of who? Christ. Christ. So Christ followed after Paul. Uh, I mean, so, uh, Christ, uh, Paul followed after Christ. Not Paul follow, uh, not Christ following after Paul. Everybody understand what I'm saying, right? Amen. <laughs> getting a little tongue tied, getting a little excited. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And this is who we're supposed to follow, not Paul. I mean, we understand his, his writings and everything and his teaching and everything, but we follow after Christ, yes, not after Paul. We don't, we don't even follow pro prophets, do we? We follow after Christ. Make that plain, brother. Make it plain. Because who you think gave it to the prophets? Christ did when he was Jehovah. Let's go to John the fifth chapter. John the fifth chapter. We're gonna look at something else real quick. We almost out of here. John the fifth chapter. John five, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twenty-five. John five and twenty-five. John five and twenty-five. Now look at what he is saying right here. Because you remember, Paul said that there was gonna be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. He knew that. Now look at what Jesus is saying right here. Go ahead and read. Verily, verily, I say. I said I say John 5 and 25. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Uh-huh. The hour is coming and now is. Uh-huh. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Uh-huh. And they that hear shall live. Stop right there. Now that's the first resurrection right there. Because it's going to be two resurrections. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. That's the first resurrection. Now, Paul already told you there's going to be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. The just coming in the first resurrection, the unjust is going to come when? In the second resurrection, along with some of those the righteous and the unrighteous going to come up in the second resurrection but they have to be judged but the ones that come up in the first resurrection that is straight up the just they don't have to be judged they, they faded sealed already like the prophets for instance go to Hebrews 11 and see who the ones that's going they without us shall not be made perfect and Paul started and the writer of Hebrews started calling them out we know, and then you go over to Revelation, I think that's the fifth chapter over there. It talks about, I mean, Revelation 20, 21st chapter, where it talks about the prophets go get their rewards. Go ahead and read. 26. Uh huh. For as the Father hath life in himself, uh huh. So hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, uh huh. And have given him authority to execute judgment also. Because he is the son of man. Go ahead. Marvel not at this. Uh -huh. But hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Oh, that's the second resurrection right there. Yes, just sir. like Paul said, there's going to be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all 